In today's video, we're going to talk about five things that you must have in a nano reef tank. Welcome to my latest video, and this is really about the five must haves of a reef tank. Uh, I'm not going to be talking about lights, I'm not even going to be talking about power heads or skimmers or the tank itself as to me they are a given. Now of course a skimmer, lots of debate whether you can run a tank with or without it, not covering that today other than the fact I've got a skimmer in all three tanks but I have run a tank before without a skimmer. So coming in at number five we have life. We have live rock, we have live sand, and for me they're a must, especially in a, in a nano tank. And those people that follow me for a while will know that on this tank I had real problems with a lack of life and biodiversity. And if I look at my pre previous two tanks, I've used live sand with dead rock, and they've both been fine. So you need a combination of both live sand and live rock, whether that's some rock rubble from a previous tank, or maybe from another reefer, or some NFS are now beginning to get in chunks of live rock that they will sell to you that will definitely help your tank mature in the first 12 months a lot quicker than it otherwise would. At number four, we have the reverse osmosis and deionization machine. I put my teeth in for that one, or RODI for short. Why would I say you need this? Uh, you could buy the water, your salt water, or your um, RODI water, or RO water from your LFS. But if you look online, you're trusting in that LFS. And there's some great LFS out there, but others will let their TDS get a lot higher than zero, and really you must have zero as it. Uh, also, in the UK, you have something called spotless, where you can go and you can get uh, RO water that's really, really cheap. But again, you get mixed reviews on that in terms of the quality of that water, and sometimes it might contain phosphate or nitrate or a higher TDS, and that's really down to them changing the, uh, the different filters that they have. So I would say don't trust anyone else, make it yourself. Now, of course, if you've got a smaller tank, that's quite an outlay when you're only making a small amount of water. But I think there's a couple of reasons. One, actually it's cheaper in the long run, uh, because at, if you go to your LFS, you'll pay more for it. You may have to pay for petrol. When you go there, there's always a temptation of buying that extra coral, that extra fish. I'm not saying go to your LFS, but if you have the machine yourself, as long as you keep your filters clean, you have DI resin, then there's no reason why you can't put in quality water into your tank, both from a top-up perspective, but also to mix with salt water. So I would say an RODI for me is a must-have. So for number three, I would say salinity. It's a really important parameter. And also what I use to test that salinity is twofold. Either I use a refactometer, which has been around for, for donkey's years, it's fairly cheap. You can get one for about 40 pounds in the UK, and maybe about 40 to 50 uh, dollars in the in the US. I would say it's a must have. I test my tank uh, each time I do a water change uh, and also just before I test the parameters as well. Because if your parameter if your salinity is out, then actually the rest of your parameters are going to be out with it. So you won't really know what your alkalinity will be, your nitrate, your phosphate, your calcium as a result of your salinity being wrong. An alternative to a refractometer is the HANA checker. Now I've got the HANA salinity checker, I've had it for a while and it's really convenient. You just dip it into the tank, keep it there for maybe 30 seconds and it'll tell you what your salinity will be. It also tells you what your temperature is. So if you just made that a fresh, fresh batch of uh, salt water and of course you want to put it hopefully in unless you're doing a small water change at the same temperature you can dip it into the, the tub of water and you can see what the salinity is uh, it's been mixed and also what the temperature is so you can put it in to match the parameters of your of your tank the refractometer is a lot cheaper than the HANA salinity tester and you do need to calibrate your HANA salinity tester I would say every two to four weeks. I do it every two weeks because I test three tanks per week and that adds to the cost and it is more expensive. But it's far more convenient than a refractometer. Number two, we have the auto top off. Now this is really, really important because it controls salinity. As your water evaporates in your tank, you need to put that water back into that, that RO water, to keep parameters stable, especially your salinity. If you don't, then number one, if it goes for too long, your pump will dry up because usually your water evaporates and, and the water goes down in your return pump. 
And secondly, your salinity will rise because your water evaporates, but not the salt that goes within it. Now, the one I recommend is one of two, either the Tunzi Oscillator or the Red Sea Auto Top Off, which is the three in one. Uh, I did a review again of both of those quite recently and compared to, I put it in the description below, and I would recommend either one of those. But if you want a bit of innovation, then I'll go for the Red Sea, because not only does it can be used as an auto top off. It also gives you an alert if your reservoir is too low and also comes with two added things. Number one, it will monitor your temperature. So if you're out and about and the temperature drops or the temperature peaks, you will get a notification. And secondly, it has a leak detector on it and that has triggered for me once when my skimmer overflowed. As I say, I've got a review of both of those in the, in the description below. But that is number two and they are a must is the auto top off. And number one for me is a temperature controller. And in this case, it's the DD controller. Now, controlling your temperature is as important as controlling your salinity. And that's why I've gone for, for this. The DD controller is very cheap. It is reliable. I've used it across all three of my tanks. Uh, you set the, the, the high level of temperature and the lower level of temperature. And if it goes outside of that range, you have an audible alarm. So the downside of that is if you're out of the house. But what I would say, I use that in conjunction with the Red Sea uh, 3-in-1 Auto Top Off works perfectly. Now, if you have a titanium heater, you need a temperature controller because there is no built-in thermostat to it and your tank will just go hotter and hotter. Uh, you can get a, heaters that have a thermostat on it, but sometimes they're a little bit hard to judge the temperature and they are not foolproof and they're known to fail. So this acts as a, as a backup to that. It's an audible backup and it just works. And if you look at the, the, the top two parameters, one being heat, and to be salinity, we've covered both of those off in this video. So that's it for now. If you disagree, then please give me a thumbs down. If you agree, then give me a thumbs up in the, uh, in the and also put some comments in there. Tell me what other products, of the five top products that you would have that are must-haves, what would they be instead of the five products that I've talked about here? It'd be great if you could subscribe to the channel. And for now, thank you very much for watching and see you on the next video.